Welcome back to the Chamber Matters. Um, we've been speaking about agriculture here in Dufferin County. We were talking about the Dufferin Federation of Agriculture. We still have Ron joining us, who's uh, speaking on behalf of the Dufferin.biz um, Association. And now we're joined by Ross Miller, who is the president of the Ram Rodeo Tours. Very exciting job <laughs> you must have, Ram Rodeo Tours. Let's talk a little bit about that, but I know um, you also represent sort of the equine industry, and we were talking about the different niches and the different sectors, and we'd like to shift our focus now over to equine. So talk a little bit about that. I mean, that's something that has been growing a lot in Dufferin County. Well, it has, and it, you know, I found it very interesting this morning to sit and listen to your other guests, and we were just talking about how it is all under the umbrella of agriculture, and the equine is, it's part of agriculture, but it's a very diversified industry as well. There's many different disciplines and the same way there's many different crops and so forth. But I think one thing that might be a little unique about the equine, it does obviously bring wonderful economic opportunities with over 10,000 horses, but it also brings very much of a tourism component as well and a bit of an entertainment factor which involves a tourism. And that, that to me, it, it takes us a little different down a little di more diversified path and a different road to some degree. And you touched on um, the topography here and how it is. It's mm -hmm. a great topography for equine. Um, so what is it that equine um, farms are looking for if they were to consider coming to Dufferin? What, 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 what are they looking at? Well, one of the, uh, as I understand it, because I'm not a horse uh, <laughs> guy, but uh, uh, it has to do with footing, actually. Footing for the horses, as I understand Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And in fact, that was one of the reasons that uh, our neighboring uh, municipality of Caledon was uh, awarded the Pan Am Games to come up, the equestrian part of the Pan Am Games, because of the actual, uh, where the Palgrave uh, Equine Center is, has got this unbelievable soil uh, for horse jumping and um, those kinds of activities. And we've got pockets of it all over uh, the eastern portion of Dufferin. And, well, uh, you're, you did hit the nail on the head. I mean. The environment for the horses is extremely important. The footing for the, I mean, I was really proud of Paul Grave. Mm -hmm. They did so many tests and they came through and they established that the footing for the horses for what they needed in the sand was perfect. But even for raising horses and keeping horses, mm -hmm. I mean, it's important for the care of the horses that there's not, they're not, you know, you don't want to be too damp. Okay. You need some shelters. There's wonderful trees. And even just the way that the slopes, it, the way that topography is, it, it keeps the, the water off of it and it, uh, it just lends itself to beautiful horse country, which is a diversity in one community, as we were saying earlier there chatting, to be able to have such a great rich farm community and on basically one side of the Highway 10 area really lends itself beautifully in there to that whole horse, what we need. So talking about the Pan Am Games, what is that going to, I mean, from a tourism perspective, you can sort of see that. Yeah. But what does it mean for the equine industry? Does that put, maybe, does it put this area on the map? Does it help to uh, gain attention and maybe helps you out a bit in, in your job to attract <laughs> agribusiness here? Well, anytime you can get more people coming up enjoying what we have, the chances of uh, having a few of them stay uh, increases. And uh, certainly that's going to be the case when the 2015 Games come. Uh, I think the region already is known as a horse is horse country, um, as our uh, as our um, adjoining municipalities are as well. Um, but this will give us an opportunity in 2015 to showcase the region and um, take people around and show them what we've got. Well, it's I mean I come from Calgary originally, and I remember back in '88 at the Olympics. It's known as a ski area and it's known for its facilities, but it really showcased it and highlighted it. And the same way in here, I think that we are known for the horse. And it's, I don't want to say it's a well-kept secret, but this will absolutely endorse it at a world level and show that we are a world level. Mm -hmm. And I hope with the wonderful facilities they're going to build, I mean, there's a legacy behind this that's going to really continue to take the equine here and put it in Canada's forefront. So you just touched on, you came from Calgary, so does that mean you grew up in that industry? Is that something that's in your blood? <laughs> Did you grow up on a horse farm? Well, uh, no, but I grew up all around them. And uh, 
I really come from more of a marketing background, okay. and that's how I got involved with promoting the equine world, and uh, through the love and the passion of the horse. And I'm, you know, happy that in my life I can put my uh, my business side of it to something I have a passion about, which is in feed the horse. Let's talk a little bit about your business. I mean, it must be an interesting when you walk into a room and tell somebody what you do. <laughs> <laughs> what's sort of the it's first uh, comment that comes out of your mouth? Do you? <laughs> well, it's. I seem to be known around here for the rodeos. I mean, we for 15 years we produced the Ram Rodeo Tour, which we're very proud of. My actual business is equine marketing. Um, we also own a, a company. It's called the Can Am. I'll promote my own show, but it's called the Can Am Equine Show, which is Canada's largest all breed show, and it's tr typically been down in southwestern Ontario. But for the first time, we're going to bring it here to the new Orangeville Event Center, the Agricultural Event Center. Um, we have clinicians coming from all over the world. Uh, and breeds from everywhere coming to it. So that's a part of it. And then the other segment of it is, of course, we have uh, an equestrian division where we get involved in all disciplines and promoting uh, all the different disciplines. So the rodeo is the one that everybody seems to know of and is the fun part of it and to a degree. But the whole, the other part is really a major part of the business. Just the whole, it, it's surprising how diversified the equine business can be. And um, when you when you think of equine, I mean, we think about the horses, and we talked about the other parts of the industry. Um, with the rodeo itself, how do you? I mean, some people may see that as not the nice part of equine. Does that do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you know, there are some people who don't necessarily agree with the rodeo. Um, mm -hmm. But how do you change that? How do you make it so that people are educated on the purpose of it and and the reason it exists? Yeah, and I I think the people that that question it nine and a half out of ten times there's a naivety as to what we actually do and what I do is I simply we have a 100 percent open book policy with the Ontario SPCA we work with them we do clinics for them um, they come to all of our events and I, I do tell people because I'm a little jaded but I say if you have any concerns you should phone the SPCA and ask them about the rodeo and what it involves because they can explain that and I think it brings a, a real entertainment factor it also brings the agriculture because we do have the livestock, we have the cattle, we have the bulls, and, and we're proud of our animals. You know, when you pay $300,000 for a bucking bull, oh, wow. believe me, you look after it. And I know, you know, I mean, there's horses in, at the Stampede this year, one sold for $158,000. So like anything, we're extremely proud of our stock, and, uh, and I'm proud that we have an open book policy, as I say, with the SPCA, and, and it is an entertainment package. What are some of the challenges in the equine industry? What are what are some of the things you're hearing when you're out there talking to people? Well, in every business, there's always challenges, and there's there's change, and the horse business is no different than anyone else. We don't like change. People, <laughs> people in general don't. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, and one of the challenges right now is that the government is, of course, looking at the race industry, which, over the last twelve to fifteen years, was a wonderful component to mm -hmm. the growth, not just of racing, but I believe it helped the whole agriculture. I mean, it employed sixty thousand people. They're looking at it. Uh, it's catching people a little by surprise, but I understand they have to look at it, and I hope that they bring it out and tweak it a little bit and continue so it can thrive and do well in the future. But of course, that's a concern of everybody's as to how it's going to be tweaked and how it will survive. But at the same time, the other the other disciplines are really thriving. I mean, the world of rodeo right now is as strong as it's ever been, but the horse jumping and the equine and the things that are going on over at Palgrave right now are absolutely leading edge and it's it's really growing. And I think <coughs> you, you've touched on a point there. Uh, it, the the controversy right now with equine, as I understand it, is more, more about the race mm -hmm. sector. Yeah. And actually in Dufferin County, we don't have a lot of race horses. Not anymore. Um, well, no. it, the percentage of racehorses is very small compared to other communities. So we have these other disciplines and other types of horses, which will not be affected or shouldn't be affected by that. It may be a little bit with some of the service industries, but if we fight to keep this industry, we should come out ahead. Well, and I agree with you, and I think, you know, I don't like to do it at the expense of the race program, but no. it will probably, some people will... People are still going to have a love for the horse, and mm -hmm. you know, it, in our little area here, I, I'm sure we'll see some growth patterns coming. Now, when you consider a horse farm, when you consider something as a horse farm, are you talking people with more than what ten horses? Like, what <laughs> if what if somebody who just has a horse and they do ride it, or maybe they compete in a show? Is is that 
part of your 10,000 horses or is that yeah, separate absolutely. of that? Oh, That's okay. a big part of it. And okay. it's, um, there's so many, anywhere from a couple acres upward for a horse farm is happening these days. And it's, uh, as I say, our community happens to lend itself so well to it. So, and when you look at the horse population, I mean, we 10,000 horses just in our little community. Mm -hmm. And if you went in a, if you went in a two mile circle of Orangeville. Two hours. Two hours. Oh, two, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, <laughs> that is a little tight, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> two hour circle, that would be, uh, I believe it's 70, some odd, 78% of the whole horse yeah. population in Ontario, which is Canada's largest horse population. So how do we make Dufferin County a horse friendly community? How do we do that? We're working on that. <laughs> 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 we started the, uh, the uh, we've started an organization, the Headwaters Equine Leadership Group, and we are actually just putting that together now. And we're trying to get the people that live within the community to come together. And we want them at the end of the month, in September 27th, we're actually going to have a, a symposium and get everybody together for this. But we really want to talk to the people who live in the community. And we want to take some of the examples from around the world and some of the great spots that have made it and focus on making it a horse friendly, environmentally, plus people friendly, plus tourism friendly, and put all that together. and make sure that we get the growth out of it that uh, we can certainly see. And I'm just wondering, is this, is the horse or the equine industry, is this something that's been emerging? It seems to be a more of a newer emerging thing. I mean, the horse racing thing might be a little different, but uh, even when you take a drive through Dufferin, there used to be lots of cattle in the fields, and now I see a lot more horses in the fields. So it's gotta be something a little more newer as opposed to... Uh, I think it, we're seeing the growth here because of the, the way the farms are right. moving and downsizing. I mean, in this area where there's development happening, as a development happens, our challenge is to, through the development, just to keep it agricultural friendly and the horse allows it in a smaller way. Yeah. Okay, well, you know what? Thank you so much for uh, sharing the equine industry with us because it is something that is unique and with the Pan Am Games coming, I think people need to be educated on the impact it's gonna have here locally, not only with tourism, but with the agriculture sector. and. I'm sure it's something that helps a lot with uh, promoting our community. Um, so thank you very much for joining us today, thank Ross. We're going to take a short break here on the Chamber Matters, and when we return, we're going to meet a farmer who promises his his beef is smoking. So don't go away.